in the last video for our circuits analogy. Congratulations, by the way, for making it this far. Um, we've now defined a few things. We've talked about the rules of this game. We've talked about detectors, ammeters, and voltmeters. We've even intuitively come up with the results of Kirchhoff's laws for series and parallel circuits. How amazing! Now let's put it into practice. So here's an example. It's a combination of uh, kinds of things that show up often on exams for IB, not only paper one, but also paper two. So I've sort of combined a few things into one sort of potentially nasty question. But when you understand this stuff, these kind of questions can be super easy. And that's the goal. So in the circuit below, find the total equivalent resistance at the battery. We have a 10 volt battery. And if you notice, then, if you're a coulomb of charge here, imagine which path you're taking. Remember, it depends on which loop you take. So watch this. You go along this way, you go along this, and then, oh, you have a choice. You might go down and take that loop, or you might go and take this loop where you go up and across. But you'll have to still consider. So there's one of those two loops. First of all, we want the total equivalent resistance of the battery. What that means is, what is the battery acting like? The battery is going to you know, act like there's just one resistor. You know, In other words, you can redraw it as just one resistor. And maybe, actually, that will be one way to do it. Sometimes I like to solve these questions by just redrawing it. So can you notice right now, this looks really gross, right? So maybe I can make it easier. Watch this one. I'm going to do this. Maybe you're going to like this. Oops. Like this. What I'm going to do is attempt to redraw it as, do you see these two resistors in series with each other? If I just concentrate on this section right here, there's two resistors in series. And what do we do with resistors in series? Remember, the total resistance of that little piece is just add them up. So in this case right here, I can redraw it as instead of R and R, R plus R is 2R. So I'm going to replace it with just one resistor of value 2R. And this one's still 1R. I'm going to redraw it one last time. Watch this. I'm going to redraw it now as if it's just one resistor now. See, this is what we wanted, the total equivalent resistance. This is this value here. How do I deal with that? Can you see I've got two resistors in parallel now? Can you see in parallel circuits? If you've got a place with a path, you know, the coulombs can go in one path or the other. That's what I have here. So I can say 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. I'm going to use that. So in this case, I'm going to say 1 over R, in this case, I like to put P, P for parallel. You know, I'm going to put that little parallel part here. Well, it's going to be 1 over R, that's this bottom one here, plus 1 over 2R. And you just have to be very, very careful with your fractions. So if we look at this, then let's see, that means 1 over RP equals, I just like P for parallel. Um, let's see, I need to make them both the same denominator. So I'm going to make them both over 2R. Luckily, the second one is already over 2R, so that one can stay. However, I have to multiply R by 2 to get it to be 2R. So that means the top has to also multiply by 2. Therefore, I can say that 1 over RP equals, let's see, 2 plus 1 is 3. So the answer is 3 over 2R, right? No, wrong. I just wanted to allow you to think about the wrong answer. This is 1 over RP is 3 over 2R. Therefore, RP... You can think about, you could flip the equation. If you see my hands are here, you can actually flip the equation. You can actually, whoosh, you go like this. Some people call this cross, multiply, and divide. I call it just do algebra. It was in my mind, look at this RP. It comes up to the top here. But that means you have to bring this one over here to the top. This one goes to the bottom. So either way, you end up with RP equals, let's see, it's going to be 2R over 3. And that's going to be the total resistance here. That's going to be, it's going to act like there's just that resistor right here. It's going to be 2R over 3. It's going to be like one resistor that's a value, 2R over 3. That's what the battery is going to act like. That'll be the total equivalent resistance at the battery. All right. That was actually the hard part. Turns out the potential difference across A and B, sometimes these questions are amazingly easy. Think very carefully about this. This is, uh, you can think about it using Kirchhoff's laws, or you can think about it using this analogy that I've shown you. Imagine then you pass by the battery, you're a coulomb of uh, charge, so you're, you're getting a piece of chocolate, you know, I'll use the analogy. You're getting 10 pieces of chocolate, and then you go through and you pass by here, right, through that path there. If we're going to consider A and B, we've got to consider that path. Think about this then. If I placed my, if I want the potential difference across A and B, that means I would place it here and here. What would I measure? Can you see how here you've gained 10 pieces of chocolate? That means if you measured across here to here, remember, if you've, if you've taken this path, that's everything. 
So that means if you gained 10 pieces of chocolate, does it make sense here that you would lose 10 pieces of chocolate? That would be the potential difference here. You just say V equals 10.0 volts. In other words, it would be the same exact voltage, same exact potential difference. Isn't that amazingly easy? Well, by the way, let's just ask, what if it had been, what is it across this R right here? What would you say it was? Remember, these are the same R values. This is R, this is the same R. Does it make sense this would be, because of the same height chairs, you could say in the analogy, does it make sense that you'd have to eat up your 10 pieces of chocolate evenly by going over them? So do you see this one is 5 volts? This one is 5 volts? What is it across this one? Imagine then you cross over this one here. Do you see this one here would be 10 volts? So this one here would be 10 volts. This would be 5 volts. This would be 5 volts if that makes any sense. Because look, if you go across this right here, you gotta go 10 has to equal five plus five if you do that little loop. If you do the outer loop, you only pass through one. That's why you have to eat all 10 volts here, all 10 pieces of chocolate. I hope that helps to make the circuits way easier.